Hey guys, I want to try to talk about some angles that can be problematic, and they certainly are for me. A lot of times, I try to make sure I avoid them whenever I can. But I just set up a little stupid example where, in this case, playing eight ball, I got stripes, and here I sit. If I'm straight down on this nine, duh, right? It that's not this this angle is not a problem. If I come out a little bit further, now I can shoot the same thing. I don't have to be slow rolling it. I can just shoot the same thing and bounce out. Again, not a problem. The problems start to happen. When we're in between those two. That's one of, one of the problems. I have a few. So this was straight in. And this was enough angle to be able to bounce comfortably out. Now what if I'm in here? This is a slight cut to my right, but it is a cut. If I hit this nine ball straight in the face, it's probably not going to go in. It's probably, if it goes in, it's going to slide off the rail like that. I don't think we want to count on that, especially if you're on a little bit tighter pockets. So if, if you end up with an angle like this, if I end up with an angle like this, well, I'm less than thrilled because in order to get the cue ball to bounce back off the rail like it did in that one example, I have to really slam this ball. And I don't want to really be slamming stuff. I'm going to hit this, hit this shot hard. Well, I lose accuracy when I shoot that damn hard. And a lot of tables just won't accept a ball at that angle coming in when it's shot that hard. So I have to remember that, well, yeah, this looks, this looks easy. All I have to do is shoot the 15. I got shape on a nine. Stop shot shape on the on the eight. Perfect, right? And then it is. It's pretty easy. But if I get that wrong angle on that nine, which I didn't, let's pretend I did. Actually, I did get the angle. I didn't make the 15. If I get that now. I'm going to be stuck to the rail. I'm going to shoot the nine to make it, but now I'm shooting off the rail. And this could be a problem. Shooting off the rail can be a problem. I have a, an issue with it. In that, in that case, it was all right. But it's something that can cause problems, is getting that just slightly wrong angle. Now I've had the same situation and I come out too far. Now this here was just about perfect, remember? Let's see I blow my shape, come out too far. My opponent leaves me this. This still looks pretty darn easy. But depending on how fast the table is and things like that, this can get you into that area where you you're not 100% sure that you can stop stop the cue ball on this proper angle. And what I end up doing a lot is I end up basically spinning the shit out of it, putting a lot of left angles on it, and trying to do like a soft draw back off the rail. By having that much English on a shot is almost never good. But I'll try, I, I'll try to do something like this and hold the angle for that. I think I might, I might have managed to get shape. And I did, but depending on the situation, you know, hell, I came a foot and a half off the rail. Just because instead of leaving the cue ball on this angle, I left it on this thing. Come out even further. 
I still might be tempted to sl try to slow roll this damn ball with a lot of left English. Might be. And I don't think I could I don't think I can hold it. Not on this table. And I didn't, and I didn't make the ball. To all three shots on the nine, pretty easy shots, as long as I wasn't trying to play shape for the eight. But those last two, because I'm playing shape for the eight, they got they got tricky. And one of them I even missed. As long as we're doing the same example, another issue could be, let's see, remember this is straight in on the nine. So I get over here. I'm in. I'm inside the nine. When I say I'm inside it, I mean I'm closer to the rail than the nine is. There's a few things that can be done on a shot like this to try to hold. One way is just a touch of right English. Stop, drop, dry out. That's a pretty darn common shot, I believe. And depending on you know your skill and, and all that fun stuff, that may be really easy. You can also do the same thing with a little bit of left English, which at first seems counterintuitive because if I want to make the nine with left English, the cue ball has to come out here a little bit more, which means it's going to go a little bit more in that direction. But it's also got bottom left on it. I, I think I said left. I meant bottom left. And if you think about bottom left, and you visualize what happens if I hit this cue ball with bottom left, is it's spinning in this direction, hits the nine, and then that bottom left will help to hold it up just a little bit. The bottom left, just for a fraction of a microsecond or whatever, wants to pull it back in this direction because that's where it was hit and that's the way it's spinning. Of course, you have to stroke it, you can't just slow roll it. But I can hold this ball up almost as well with bottom left and a thinner hit than with bottom right and an almost full hit. I likely missed it by 100 miles, but it does, it does function. I think I went too far in that case. No, I still got the shot. It, it, it's just an, it's an option. So, I don't know, I wanted, I wanted to in, illustrate that even though this looks like an easy situation, and it is to make the nine if that's your only goal, but which angle you get can drastically affect how easy it's going to be to get shape on that eight. If I'm all the way out here, I missed my shape by trying to slow roll it with a buttload of spin, miss my shape and my shot actually. So if my opponent leaves me this, or if I screw up and I leave myself this, I have to try to remember, hey Dave, that's too much angle. For this layout, that is too much angle. You're going to have to take a more scenic route to try to get shape on the eight. And in this case, that means I'm going to have to try to go back and forth across the table. I get shape on it that way. Not nearly as high percentage as being straight in on it would have been. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. So I talked briefly about you know the straight in kind of shots. And one of the one of the things that I do have a problem with is you know, for like this shot right here, one hundred percent straight in and into the corner. I know how to shoot this. I'm not, you know, sometimes I'm not physically capable of doing it, but but I know what you're supposed to do. The problem that I run into is, whoops, what's that kitty? Instead of the ball being there, what if it's here? It's almost straight in. I can I can hold it, and I'll get a little bit of a split brain syndrome on, okay, how do I hold it? As I discussed in my other example, I can hold this with a little bit of like bottom right, like a stop shot. Missed the shot. 
I feel bad because I just kicked my cat. Now she'll never forgive me. I can hold it with a little bit of well, that thing was. Some of that I don't have to put any spin on it because even though if I cut it, if I just flat out cut it in, it's not going to drift very far. Maybe that's still good enough. I can just go right at 6 o'clock. And that's still fine. It, my problem with shots like that are, I think, just internally deciding what I want to do. I know I have options to shoot essentially a stop shot on the one. I want to hold the cue ball as close to that area as I can for whatever reason. And, and I have these options that I, that I think maybe I just have a hard time picking an option, and uh, maybe some other people do too. If I go bottom right on this, if I'm left, I can hit it softer. <clears throat> For me, the trick on shots like that is just deciding how I'm going to hold it up. I know I want to hold it up. Okay, now how am I going to do it? That, that's the next trick. The next thing I want to talk about, I think this might be my last example. No, it's not. I thought I just thought of something else. So, huh? Is, so I have a shot like this. I can do my next few setups, my next couple, with, with this kind of layout. In playing eight ball, you got solids. This is perfectly straight in. I didn't really want to do that because I want I wanted the possibility of a scratch to be there. Hang on a second, I'm thinking out loud. Well, okay, not not playing any uh, playing one pocket. How's that sound? That's my pocket. Perfectly straight in on this one ball. If I'm perfectly straight in, I screwed up. If I left myself this, I screwed up. I'm gonna end up I probably shoot the one. What would I do? Because I'm a little bit reckless sometimes. Um, some people might shoot the one and roll up to about here and then try to kick the eight towards their pocket. I doubt that I would do that. I think what I would do is try to double back the eight and, and get the cue ball back up here. I think. I didn't get the cue ball back up here. I'm not really sure. Back to my earlier point though. If you're playing one pocket and you leave yourself bad, it's perfectly straight in, then you screwed up. You didn't want this angle. I certainly doubt you. Let's say you're here. Now there's a slight cut to my left, to my right, and there's a natural carom to come down here and shoot the eight next. It's also a natural scratch to come down here. If you come down there in the wrong direction, there's a scratch. And sometimes I will struggle with, okay, how do I get shape on the gate? How, I can try to stun straight down here to this point. I can try maybe to draw over to like here softly and then cut the gate. I can try to stun kind of straight towards the pocket, but not so hard that I scratch. All these are really, really tricky. A way to find out uh, what is the tangent line is you can just take your cue and imagine I'm shoving this, this 15 into that pocket, into that pocket. Just shoving it in there. Okay, where's, where's it to my tip point? It's pointing almost at the pocket. And what that's telling me is that the regular tangent line, if I hit a stop shot, the cue ball is probably going to hit this point. So don't do that. Just hit it just a little bit of bottom. Teeny tiny bit. And it comes up. Doesn't have to worry about scratching. I would like to have gotten better shape than that. So I'm going to shoot it again. In that case right there, 
even though I've, I've measured it, I still had a little bit of split brain syndrome. What if I scratch on camera? That type of deal. The thing is, though, if I make the ball with stop side action, a little bit of bottom, no, I won't scratch. I don't like what's happening here. The cue ball's not moving very quickly for me. I'm scared to slam it, but it seems like that's what I'm going to have to do. See the direction that went in, right towards that point. That's what that's what I was doing before. That I think is a nice way. I, I guess you know to make me feel better, make me feel a little bit safer on a shot. If for whatever reason I had the same deal, this is still a slight cut to my right, and I wanted to try to stun straight down here, maybe maybe. Maybe there's balls here that I don't want to mess with. Bad examples. I don't want to, well, I don't want to risk getting tied up, so I just want to stun right down here. Well, my tangent line took me to this point, so I can't be doing that. I can hit it a little, just a teeny tiny bit above center and push forward that tangent line a little bit. I can put a little bit of left English on it, and it's just a cheat the pocket and force, force that tangent line to change down to here. And that's the way I would typically, typically do it on the shot. It's just a touch of left English now and cheat the pocket. I come down like that. Typically what I would do on this shot. So, like I said, I like this, it's a kind of a neat way that I can use to make myself feel a little bit safer. So I do worry about scratching on stuff like that because you know you scratch on your opponent. In this case, he's got these two balls right here and this ball right here, and I just scratched. He's probably going to win the game, and I don't like it when they win the games. I wanted to talk about a phenomenon that doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's one one of the most annoying things that can ever happen. And I don't even have figured out, okay, why, 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 what causes this to happen? So I'm setting up the same shot again, slight cut. This would be straight in. This is that slight cut to my right. And I'm playing one pocket. 99.999 times out of 100, I can shoot this shot. Where am I going to put the next ball? I'll put the next ball right here. I can shoot this shot with high right. Cue ball goes one, two, and then in theory out here for shape on the 12. And in theory that looks something like. Something like that. And that works a lot and that's for some fairly standard stuff right there. But every now and then, I bet most people watching this video have had something like this happen. It's still a cut. It's a very slight cut, but it is a cut. Have you ever had a situation where you tried to shoot a shot like that with, with like top inside, come around, and you make the 10, in this case, and the cue ball goes straight in that pocket, and somehow it seemingly defies the laws of physics, and instead of going down here, it follows that ball in. This does happen, it doesn't happen very often, and it's got to be like a quality of stroke thing, or, or, or a complete, total bad luck thing. If I had the answer to that, I would be a very happy man. Another possibility is that the cue ball can be in the air. Maybe the cue ball is in the air a little bit when it hits, not up here, but just a little bit when it hits the 10. And it's still got that spin. Well, that top right spin is spinning it towards that pocket. But uh, it's also going to carry him down here and then start spinning towards that pocket. Sometimes that carry doesn't happen or it doesn't happen enough. So I've thought at times that maybe it's. That's not carry him more. I elevate a little bit and it carry him out quite a bit more. I haven't figured it out. All I know is sometimes it happens, 
and I don't like it when it happens. A very, let me get some balls out of this pocket, a very similar thing can happen occasionally. Again, slight cut to my right. Honestly, this might even be too much angle for this, the, the last couple things I'm talking about. These two shots are lined up uh, for it looks like about a half inch to this side of that point. This might even be too much angle. But I'm just, just, I'm just demonstrating it here. And the other thing that sometimes happens is if I want to shoot to 12 with draw, I put, it's a cut, so the 12 should come back here and then bounce out. And that looks like in theory, like that. Sometimes it doesn't do that. It's just like with the follow shot. Sometimes that cue ball takes an unnatural angle and comes straight back, basically straight back towards the shooter, which in this case is unfortunately straight back towards the side pocket. And it would be perfectly understandable. I could actually draw back into the side, but it's not perfectly understandable to me that I can draw back into the side and still make the damn 10. One of those, one of those things that just happens. And in this case, I don't even need right English. If I had bottom right on the shot, for, I have no idea why I would put bottom right on the shot if I'm trying to draw back. But if I did, at least I could kind of understand because it will be the same thing as my top right example. The spin is, bottom right, the spin is pulling it back in this direction towards his pocket. But in the case of this shot, I'm just going to put straight six o'clock on it. But sometimes, instead of caroming and having a nice, whatever it is, a parabola or whatever, and coming and doing this, sometimes it like just goes, Oh, well, I'm done carrying me. I'm going to suck back now. I'd love to be able to figure out what, how to do that on purpose. That'd be cool. And, uh, well, not to scratch, but just to know what the hell's going on. And I guess sometimes something like that might come in handy. And I, if I knew how to do it on purpose, I would know how to not do it on purpose as well. Or oh, stroke the hell out of that ball. So, if anyone has been paying attention, they may have noticed that I seem to have turned into a little bit of a weirdo. I did a, uh, I did a video about a year ago about weirdos. Uh, and I, what I was talking about then were people that like do the wrist when they're shooting. Not that they're, that they're weirdo, but they, they're unusual, and to me it seems a little bit weird. So people that do the wrists, that was one of uh, Josh Roberts has his slip stroke. Um, a lot of people that are natural, naturally right-handed, but shoot left-handed, and just seem a little bit awkward. Well, anyway, I turned into one because I hurt my thumb. So instead of gripping my cue like this, for the most part, these last few days, I'm gripping it like this. Luckily, I don't do the wrist or anything, so this it doesn't really affect me. I can still, I can still, my wrist still hangs straight. I don't even know if anybody can see any of that. My wrist still hangs straight. It doesn't really affect anything. This versus this. Only thing is, this hurts, especially when I shoot. If I shoot hard. I don't know if it, I don't know, it broke my throat, my thumb, thrown, um, strained it, sprained it, whatever you do to it, it's not in the joint. Otherwise, I might just say, well, I finally got arthritis, I'm officially old. Um, it's not in a joint. But, so, I'm doing this now. And that definitely firmly puts me in the camp of weirdos that do something weird when they're shooting, not. I'm going to make this ball this time. I'm not going to make it. I just said I was going to just to decide myself up. I'm going to shoot it one more time. How's that sound? 
and then that'll that'll be the end of this video. Ish. Ah, that's up. So, yeah. I'm 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 holding the cue wrong. And I I talked a little about the, the angles and the main thing I just wanted to get across in the first the first part of this video was there are some angles that you think, oh that's perfectly fine. But they're not. You can get you can get an angle that looks perfectly fine, but it's not if you got to get shape on something. If, if the angle doesn't lend itself to letting you hold the cue ball and you got to go across the table and back like I had to do that one time, that's not perfectly fine. It still may be doable. In that case, it was doable, but it's not perfectly fine. Perfectly fine would have been giving myself that perfect angle that I had in our example, or even a stop shot would have been preferable to having too much angle. And then in my other example with the whole the cue ball taking a weird path, sometimes it happens. Wish I knew why. Don't know why. Wish I could do it on purpose, but I can't. It, it, it happens when I least want it to happen. That's when it happens. That's the rule. All right. Bye, guys.